Hydraulic fracturing for natural gas in Pennsylvania and New York is a heated topic. Whose power? Whose water? And just how natural is natural gas anyway? It's a topic we've covered on Grit TV before and one that is now really stirring up public attention. The Delaware River supplies drinking water to 17 million people, including 8.2 million New York City dwellers. It feeds a rich vacation area as well as economically struggling counties and states. On the search for cheap, clean energy, natural gas drilling has been sold as a solution. But is it? Affected communities are split. Grit TV's Sarah Friedland and Isabel Braverman went to the Delaware River Basin Commission's headquarters in West Trenton, New Jersey, to hear from residents. No water for gas! Drill now! No water for gas! Drill now! No water for gas! 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 Hydraulic fracturing, or fracking, is the process of extracting natural gas by injecting millions of gallons of water mixed with sand and chemicals into the ground. The pressure fractures the shale and allows gas to flow more freely out of the well. The problem is that 30 to 70 percent of the fracking fluid is being left in the ground and is not biodegradable. As a lifelong resident of Wayne County, Pennsylvania, I feel strongly about this issue and we need to come together to protect our environment. No water for gas! 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 Living near the Delaware River, do you guys, do you take your family on river trips? Do you enjoy you know, the wildlife there? A, whole, a huge part of our family's life is, is, has, revolves around the Delaware River. Just like almost every community in that area who lives on the Delaware River has deep ties and connections to that river. It's the cleanest river in America. It's just been put on the uh, number one most endangered river in America right now because of this very issue. And um, I think the whole livelihood of, of really anyone in that corridor is dependent upon the beauty and sanctity of that river. The river is my, as well as many others, way of life. It's like a good friend who is always there when I need it. I find myself drawn to it and miss it when I'm away. How would you like to see your friend disappear? We're not going to give it up to gas drilling. We fought everything that comes along as Delaware River Keeper Network, everything that comes along that we feel is a threat to the future of this watershed, our water quality, our water resources in our communities. And we're going to continue to fight on this. Stand with me, right? Okay, let's go in and let's tell them what we think. The Delaware River Basin Commission is a government agency that represents the interests of the Delaware River Basin. Today, the DRBC is deciding on dockets that would further the gas drilling process. There is also a public hearing where both sides are present to voice their opinion. One side opposes drilling because of the environmental and health impact. The other side argues that they can use their land as they please because of their right to private property. I'm a farmer in Damascus. I'm here today to represent the landowners from Wayne County and the NWPOA, of which I'm the executive director. The alliance is made up of individual people, their families. We're honest, we're hardworking people, we're of modest means, we're not rich. You know, there are a lot of um, people here from the Northern Wayne Property Owners Alliance who leased a huge amount of land in Northern Wayne County to Hess and Newfield, and um, they want their money. So they're here to petition the Delaware River Basin Commission to lift the moratorium, which I think is uh, it's really unfortunate that they are not willing to sit back and wait for the science uh, to show this, because this has been an industry that's gone unregulated and unexamined for the last you know, five years. You want to do something on your property, that's fine, but when it's going to come into my property and poison my water, uh, it isn't just you, it's uh, the whole community, and uh, I don't have a problem with you trying to go out and have a happy life and live all your dreams, but when you're talking about doing it at the expense of me and my friends and my family and my community, I have to stop you. I am not ashamed to tell you that there's nothing wrong with prospering. I'm a hard worker. I hope to prosper. 
and I hope to be able to pay my taxes and have a good life and spread that money around and create even more jobs. And that's what made America strong. This movement that is, is surfacing now is very ugly. We're a bit labeled as greedy landowners. Oh yeah, well maybe I am a greedy landowner, but maybe there's a little envy on the other side. These are the have-nots. Well, the film is built upon uh, a road trip and a, a, to 25 different states. There's about 10 different states that have drilling in the film. When I went places with people who had leased and who had incredible environmental damage, they also said that they didn't make nearly the amount of money that they were promised, that they had made a tenth of what they were promised. Do we want to go back to the former Soviet Union or do we want to keep America free and free enterprise and private property intact? And we have to be very careful because we're heading down a very slippery slope. We need to protect these rights. This is my daughter Annabelle. Um, I bought, brought my daughter today. One reason I brought my daughter today is to help her learn about democracy. Um, also, I want to refer to you folks specifically. It's very difficult for me to explain to my children that there is a highly qualified commission that is charged with protecting these waters, special waters, and yet this is being considered. And so you might say, we have to take some risks. Risks to who? You can't risk this water, these people, these children. It's just unconscionable to me that we're having this discussion at all. Now, back to my idea about democracy, I'm grateful that we're having it. I'm grateful that I can speak, that my daughter can witness this, and that we hear everybody's points of view. But we have to keep a big picture. Thank you very much. It's not only about the money. Fracking concerns the environment as well as public health. Dr. Theo Coburn, who is a public health analyst, has been documenting um, <clears throat> the illnesses that happen in regions where gas drilling um, industrialization has taken place. Brain tumors, lesions, um, uh, lung impacts, you know, neuropathies, um, and, and different forms of cancer. The impacts of drilling on the air and the water have had a major impact on people's health. The industry has been exempt from disclosing the chemicals that are employed. That's part of the 2005 Energy Policy Act where this industry and hydrofracking in particular has been made exempt from uh, most environmental regulations. There are 135 thousand wells that are currently operating in Pennsylvania. We have strict regulations. They are not exempt from the Pennsylvania regulations for clean streams or clean air. Any other comments? Discussion? Um, uh, before we vote, I'm just going to explain that Delaware is not comfortable moving forward with the stock docket until the full scope of the regulatory um, scheme. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. All against? Delaware? Abstentions? Docket passes. I'm extremely disappointed that they granted Stone Energy water withdrawal permits and that they're uh, that they're permitting these two more exploratory wells into, in addition to the ones that they've already permitted. It sets a bad precedent for gas drilling in the Delaware River Basin that puts the, the watershed at risk. My parents are hardworking business and landowners supporting a family. Yes, my area is lacking in economic vitality, but we have to understand that drilling is not the only answer. Here is my dad, Larry Braverman, a small business owner who's lived in Wayne County for 21 years now. So, Dad, tell us about your experiences in Wayne County and how the gas drilling will sort of be detrimental to the life that you have there now. I don't know if we want to live with gas well towers, infrastructure of pipelines crisscrossing everywhere, holes in the ground with uh, polluted water, and what are we going to do with all this? How is it all going to end? What's going to happen to the people? You know, this is a farming community. Yes, we are on hard times there. And I think the farmers really need to look into this, as well as the people who live there full time and operate their businesses. And it's a, it's a beautiful place. It would be terrible to destroy.